Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the new episode of the French Bishop Podcast. I am joined here by Master Chess Dojo and Chess Chopin. Today will be a slightly shorter episode because we all suck at time management, especially me. Okay, mostly me, actually just me. Um, and uh, we'll be covering all the topics of the day, including Fide's new policy on uh, or attempted new policies on transgender athletes, uh, Magnus Carlsen's run-in with food poisoning, or maybe not, who knows, and everything else in between that we will randomly bring up and bring out the podcast because we forgot exactly what we're doing. Uh, welcome, John. Welcome, Chess Dojo. Uh, welcome, Chess Chopin. There we go. I got it the second time. <laughs> Hello. Master Master Chess Dojo, not to be confused with the the Chess Dojo live crew. What do you mean? We, we got we we got Costia as a guest. Ah. Oh, but how old is Jesse though? Oh, Jesse, yeah, don't know. He's a bit older. They're all kids to me. <laughs> <laughs> They're all kids to me. I knew Jesse as a as a scholastic player as well, mm. for the most part. But in general, I am very impressed with what is going on at the cup. Uh, Abasov caught Fabiano, I think, in a moment of tiredness, uh, perhaps from his battle with Prague and tie breaks. And Abasov uh, literally pressed Fabiano to make some mistakes in the first game of their classical encounter. And then, to his credit, Fabiano literally uh, pressured far better than uh, I'm trying to remember who it was that tried to pressure. Far better than Fabiano tried to pressure, um, was it Abasov? I'm trying to think. No, no, oh, I apologize. Prague. Well, in the tie in the tie breaks between Fabiano and Prague, I was very disappointed when uh, Fabiano tried the Italian game in a must-win situation. This is a very slow positional build-up. And although he did rush the space on the queen side and everything, he just didn't get any. And oh, I was too. very worried. What's that? The Bishop B2 game, the one he lost. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, that was sad. It was. It was just a, an awkward choice of openings. And I would have to say that Magnus Carlsen, after his first round game with Prague Nananda, complimented him by saying that he moves around so much with his openings that he did not expect what Prague played. Expect the English. He didn't prepare for the English. And he had to play a bit off the off the cuff and ended up being way down on time from Prognanon in the first game, even though they drew in 30-something moves, 35 moves. Uh, it was quite impressive that, you know, in the second game, of course, with Prognananda, it was a much shorter draw, it felt like today. I literally went in to check on it. It was a draw. But are yeah, these that's... the games that are being played after the food poisoning? Bah, bah, bah. Yeah, very convenient food poisoning after having beaten Abasov. The local uh, chess player. Yeah. What do you think, Roken? Did they do it? You're muted. You're nope. still muted. Still muted. <laughs> as a person is. You're still muted. Uh, as a more. person is worked uh, worked in restaurants, probably not. Uh, he probably he probably just has a nice tummy that's used to some some uh, some hearing and meatballs. And he went to the wrong he went to the wrong shop, and he was like. Please, sir, may I please have some more bacon on my my very 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 uh, nice salad here? And they were like, "What? What do you mean, dude? This is not the place in the world to get pork." And um, yeah, I don't know. I'm just back, I'm just kidding around. But he probably just had uh, the wrong stomach biome for the local delicacy. You know, that that makes more sense. And I've had it. Yeah, I've had it also. That the spices um, that you're used to, even though I love spicy food in general, there are different types of spices. Whether you have curry spices or with different spices bacteria or, inside them, uh, exactly. And should you meet your match, then yeah, you're your done stomach. for. And also, I think if I were if I were an Azerbaijani hoping to you know uh, alter the course of the match, I think food poisoning would have happened uh, between games one and game two of uh, Abasov's, or maybe right before the tiebreakers. That would be the best spot yeah. to get him. If if Abasov could have made it to absolutely, the I do believe that the poisoner should be fired if he if he if it was indeed poisoning. Because that's like the most <laughs> useless <laughs> useless use of poison. Like I don't know for a very very long time. I mean, you sh you need to get better at your job. You know, what, take a, take a few conferences. You know, maybe you know a few YouTube videos about when you're supposed to do it. You know, yeah, that sort of stuff. But it takes like a while. It takes a while for it to like. Uh to affect someone so maybe 
they messed up. Oh, oh, oh yeah. It's or not like not. squirting Visine into his water or something like that and giving him the runs. Yeah, and nothing, nothing like a little bit of uh, like a little bit of diarrhea also... to make you play better. <laughs> but also, like Magnus usually has like very, um, like he he takes care and his uh, food usually is like very strict or used to be like strict. He used to be like uh, on a diet and used to take care of that very well. Like Magnus used, For many... I mean. To me, he was considered to be like the m most like professional, and uh, he, uh, in the sense that he would take uh, very care about his physique. So he would like uh, outplay opponents, not because he's not just because he's better, but he's like um, he wouldn't get there. Like he would have like incredible stamina, and he he would make like uh, no breaks in concentration. And all, all ever. I mean, not just because he's like amazing, but also because of that um, that uh, preparation that he had. Yeah, I mean, I mean, non 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 chess related. There is an argument to be made though that it would have been irrelevant anyways, because hasn't he publicly stated that he will not play in the candidates or in the candidates cycle? I don't know. Am I wrong there? I mean, I think you. So I mean, like, it's, so if you. I Believe so that... if he's going to withdraw anyway, and the guy who is going to go in there in the first place is going to go in there anyway, you just seem to be kicking a guy in the guts for no reason, which, which doesn't really <laughs> seem like an efficient way of getting your job done, you know? It's, so it's probably way more likely to be an accident than somebody, you know, being knowledgeable enough to want him to go through, uh, the, the, the local guy to go through over Magnus. Uh, but not knowing that Magnus was going to play the candidate cycle anyway. Could be. I mean, it would yeah. it make, it make more sense that it was just a random accident than, than Magnus running afoul of some some nutter who doesn't know what's happening. Anyway. Or maybe he just I would say that every, long kebab chop. Every time I've had food poisoning, it's usually also involved uh, a bit of stress. Like, uh, I remember exam time in university. I had some exam that I was not necessarily so comfortable with, and I immediately went to right before the exam and ate something. Uh, uh, to be honest, it was probably the last time I think I ever went to McDonald's in my college days, and I ended up in the middle of the exam in the facilities uh, worshipping the porcelain mm. goddess. And I think I was gone for about 15 minutes, and I came back into the room, and the professor uh or actually it wasn't the professor. I'm trying to think of the person that also helps with the uh, the examination. Uh, stopped me and asked me what's going on. And I was just like, food poisoning or something. I don't know. I just did something wrong. It's just the, the, the greasiness and the uh, and the stress yeah. in my stomach. Your immune was system it. was probably compromised, you know. It's, it happens when there's stress, you know. You're, you know. It doesn't fight off infections nearly well enough. It is what it is, you know. Yeah. It happens. It does. Okay. What a snappy podcast. There we go. You know, full, full of intrigue and, and right, you know, and interjections about what we're going to oh. do next. And, um, um, Corey Achkina won the female section of the World Cup. Corey Achkina did win. That was lovely. She came through. Even though I was rooting for the IM, I'm always rooting for the underdog. I live very close to Shea Stadium slash Mets Stadium, not the Yankees. I live closer to the Mets, therefore I favor the underdog, not really, but in general. <laughs> okay. It's like being an Arsenal fan. Okay. So losing horribly after being predicted to win. Okay, that's something. Um, okay, sounds sounds all right, you know. <laughs> I mean, I mean, you know, it's. I mean, my teams aren't even ever predicted to win, so I mean, there's there's bonuses there. So what we're gonna do? Uh, what what's what's a, what's our next little uh, thing to go over here today? 